Hey there, I'm Garth. I'm the animation tutor. I create a whole bunch of courses and mentorships that are specifically built for students to build their portfolio to get into their top choice animation schools. I've been helping young artists become animators for over 10 years now, and I've gotten over 100 students into colleges like Sheridan, Seneca, Capilano, RISD, SVA, CalArts, Gobelin, and the Animation Workshop in Denmark. I've taught students from all around the globe get into these incredible animation schools. And honestly, it's never hard to get students excited about animation because it's such an incredible medium. So check out my website to see all the courses and mentorships that I offer, or book a meeting with me, and I can kind of go through all the different learning resources that we have with you. Thanks for listening and enjoy the student interview. Hi. Hey, Cynthia, how are you? I'm good. <laughs> Great. <laughs> how are you feeling? Really surprised. Even though I got accepted, it still hasn't sunk in yet, so. Especially because it just happened. This, this yeah. is probably the, the student, yeah, actually, well, you're the first interview that I'm having of, mm -hmm. of students that got in this year. And it was just yesterday, right? Or was it two days yeah. ago? Yeah, I think it was on Wednesday. I was like in class and my teacher actually told me, she's like, oh, oh I, I think the results are out. And I was like, what? And I couldn't wow. focus for the rest of the class. So, yeah. yeah. Wow. That is wild. It must be such a relief now, I'd imagine. <laughs> yeah, especially so because I've been like really nervous waiting for like the results since I wasn't sure how they would mark this year. So many rumors about like um, how they're changing, like it was something to do with the strike as well. Yeah. So I was like worried about that and how it would affect like the marking. Yeah, yeah. I'm glad that's over now. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And I think it did. There's a lot of talk about this, that there was something to do with the strike and it affecting how things were marked and uh, different teachers to mark. I don't know. There's a whole bunch of rumors going around as there always is. So let's see. Very, very excited for you on behalf of Port Prep. So here's your score sheet. And this was the cutoff, or was this the cutoff? 89? Um, the cutoff was actually 87 this year. 87, okay. Yeah. Okay, great. Well, that's good. Got a few to spare. That doesn't feel too bad, eh? It, I remember like a lot of people just squeak in and that's always a little intimidating, right? It's like, yeah, you know, got a few, few points above. So in terms of, let's just have a quick look through here. I'm kind of surprised, honestly, even the figures in the hand marks, I'm just like, <sighs> Eight out of ten, eh? But yeah, it really depends on, I guess, who's marking your stuff as well. Yeah, of course. This is nice to see because I remember we spent a lot of time on this character going back and forth and kind of looking at every little possible inconsistency or... Yeah. So that's nice that that paid off. Oh, your animation too. I remember this. So solid. And look at this. We've even got a little frame counter in the top, right? Yeah. That's nice. I might hold back on, on mentioning to future students to make a background or at least like a, a big complicated something because this is such a nice simple background it allows us to focus really closely on the animation itself yeah um last year i also like didn't really have much in the background it was just like same yeah. thing as this like my object mm -hmm. and just like the props it was interacting with yeah. so if it's like if you want to save time and you don't want to do a background it's fine since you don't really need it that's yeah. great why spend that extra effort if it's not going <laughs> to really count for any points this one so what is that that's almost that's a little over i'm trying to think of the percentage of that i guess 15 would be 75 so that's around like 80 or so that's great oh yeah i remember these backgrounds too with your character yeah this is the same character as the one i used in my rotation the monkey yeah. character yeah yeah awesome it's always tricky to know what what is a 14 out of 15 out of, versus a 15 out of 15. i find that's the most difficult line to straddle it's just like yeah it sometimes feels a bit arbitrary but or, or specific to the markers i guess oh and your personal work i love this one seeing this come alive from the uh from the original line drawing. A nice little layout. I remember we talked about kind of presenting it nicely on a, on a nice little page. You even got some old classic looking glyphs. That's really nice. Oh, I love this one. It's such a unique idea. I, oh, it was so, such a joy to watch these develop each week. Inspired by my actual plants that I yeah. have at home. <laughs> Are you growing ginger? No, uh, as for the other characters, those oh, ones like the succulents and like the orchid, oh, yeah. um, those are like plants that I have at home. The other ones are just like food, random yeah. food that I chose. Yeah, yeah, great. Right. Oh yeah, and then this one. I can't remember, did you use this one in your previous year too, or? No, this was oh. actually something that I um, did for fun during like the summer, but then okay. like I, I decided to just like organize it a little for this yeah. to use as like a personal piece, so That's yeah. great, nice variety of poses and expressions and some more personal work. 
This was new. I didn't see any of this. I don't. At least I don't remember. Yeah, um, these are like um, yeah, sketchbook pages that I was doing, like just like throughout the months of portfolio, and I just like collected and chose like the ones I liked the most by the end. Yeah, that's a great idea. So. Regarding these questions, did you have a look? Uh, did you happen to see them yet? The, um... Yeah, I actually saw them and I like brainstormed a few like answers. Great. Yeah. yeah. So <laughs> let's see. The first one is top five tips that you would provide either very specific or very, very general for next year's students. What would you suggest? Yeah. So for me, um, one of my first tips would definitely be to find uh, like a group of friends that you're going to do like the portfolio together. I know that there's like a shared and hopeful server, but like it's even better if you like narrow it down to like a group of like five to ten people of like friends that either you know personally from like school or like you just met recently but you guys want to like work on the portfolio together That's and right. it's a good yeah. idea to do that because um, especially in terms of like motivation and also like critiques you'll always have like people there who can like motivate you and also like uh, share their work as well to like just keep you going so you don't really feel like down if you like feel like lost when you're like doing your portfolio. A little more intimate of a group than like a big huge server. Yeah, definitely. Because then you can like pretty much like cheer each other on and it's like you know each other like a little better yeah. so you don't feel like I guess too much pressure when you're sharing like work that's like still like um in the process of going to the final or yeah. work that you don't like as much like you yeah. won't feel so intimidated it's like a very good idea to like find friends and to do it together yeah absolutely great tip uh, my second tip would uh, pretty much be to like like don't compare yourself like too harshly with other people's works or to even like use other people's works as a like solid like formula because yeah. um that sort of like restricts the actual art that you're going to make yourself for your portfolio mm. and if you keep on like comparing yourself to others like all the time like yeah. obviously you can use it as reference but if you're using mm. other people's work as like i have to do this like it is a must then yeah. that will obviously impact like your own works mm -hmm. and you don't really want that to happen especially during portfolio keep like everything um i guess like broad when you're um collecting other people's works or when you're referencing because you don't want to like box yourself in too much yeah. since it's like sort of a, a sort of like toxic uh, mindset of during like portfolio mm -hmm. so yeah yeah that you have to draw this specific way you have yeah. to draw Glenn Keane or yeah that, that's that's a great point and also just good for like coming up with ideas if you're feeling like what happens a lot of the time is you look at someone's drawing and then you're like oh I need to make something like that but it's like well you don't have to draw it in the same style as an existing character designer you can you can push it you can continue to explore and sometimes that exploration is kind of hindered by what is currently out there yeah and another tip would pretty much be to like, obviously it's really general, but to get advice from students who already go to Sheridan or who are in like an animation program. Mm. So um, whether it's through like DMs, if they have it open on Instagram or mm. even like through the a Sheridan hopeful server, it's like a very good idea to get like people who have the experience making the portfolio to look at your stuff. Yeah. So you know if like you're, going in like the general right direction because sure. sometimes you might like go a little off track but like they'll be able to tell and like mm -hmm. give you really good tips on top of like general tips so, yeah, yeah that's great yeah I have one more that's um great. this one's just like for the process in general yeah. but for collecting reference photos um I really highly recommend using pure ref Pure ref. Like, yeah, I love pure, pure ref. <laughs> app to collect photos, and um, yeah. I'll just spell it out. It's P U R E R E F, mm -hmm. um, pure ref to collect reference photos. For those who don't know what it is, it pretty much lets you collect photos from the internet into like a collage style. Yeah, you're showing it right now. Yeah, here it is. But yeah, it lets you like Great drag software. and drop. Mm -hmm from like Pinterest or Instagram and yeah. you can even put like notes and stuff and like um or and then lets you like organize it it helps organize it with like commands yeah so like like it's super helpful especially when you have like hundreds of reference photos totally. because then you can like organize and keep it all like 
organized and easy to find. Yeah, and honestly, yeah. just to give one more shout out to Pure Rep, I literally use it for every single project professionally. <laughs> like I will, I will make a mood board on that thing because it's just easier than everything else. Like you could do it in Photoshop, but it's just it's not really built for it. Whereas Pure yeah. Rep just like can throw everything into it. You can literally drag an image from the internet right into that uh, application, and it'll like put put it in there, and you can crop it and. It's just like so easy that yeah. for everything. And you can even like um, have it like the window floats on top of everything. Yeah. So um, you don't, it doesn't like go behind your window when you like open up Photoshop or anything. Yeah. It like stays on top. So you can like yeah. continuously use it as like reference and also move it around your screen. Mm -hmm. It's like so good. It's Please great. use it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. Awesome. So I like this question. The top three things that you would do differently if you could do the whole process again? Um, for me, I think a very big thing, uh, I guess maybe for me and for everyone, is to know when to take a break from like doing your portfolio and like work in general. Because yeah. sometimes, especially when you get stuck doing work, you really don't want to like brute force something to completion. Yeah. And it's a really good idea to like leave time for you yourself to like just take a step back after like a week or something to look back at what you've done so far because um what you see after like spending like 10 hours looking at the same image and what you see after that like a week later will like be different because you haven't looked yeah. at it for so long yeah. so like take breaks in between doing portfolio and like leave time for like you to come back to look at stuff so you can find mistakes that you didn't see beforehand. Mm -hmm. That's yeah. a great one. And another another thing that I would do differently probably be to like I guess to get more practice in in like I guess gestures, storyboarding and layouts uh, before I started them because mm -hmm. I find that like especially when I was stuck I had to like keep referencing a lot of like different images and of course it's very good to reference but I think it would have saved me more time if I spent maybe like my summer just doing more practice on mm -hmm. this stuff so when I'm looking for references it would have been more like instantaneous yeah. for me to like know what I should be looking for instead of like looking for everything and then like narrowing it down and like wasting like more time sure so like yeah. practice before you start especially in the areas that you know that you will struggle in mm -hmm. so for me it was storyboard layout yeah. and yeah that's great and look how much it paid off <laughs> and um i guess one last thing would be uh, to sort of like uh, I should have probably like shown my work to even more people for mm. more, like more opinions like I did show it to like many people maybe like six or ten people but I yeah. feel like it would have been nice to have like even a wider range of people to look at my work I could have like reached out to um, more people online mm -hmm. since obviously the hopeful server not everyone uses it all the time yeah. So it's generally like the same couple of people who are like critiquing stuff. For so sure. it's a good idea to actually like reach out to people and to see if like they have like opinions about your work as well. So, yeah. yeah. And perhaps likewise, like if you are wanting to improve, like to give critiques on others work is a good practice in kind of reflecting on it and trying to see and articulate what is it that that works and what doesn't. This is the same with writers critique groups, right? Like. Part of it is yes, posting your work and getting a critique, but the other part is you critiquing others' work and, and giving feedback and, and what you think. Obviously, there's a bit of you know trickiness there with hopeful server, which is great, but you, you, there's so many people that you don't know necessarily who a lot of them haven't got in yet, right? So you don't know yeah, who you're that's true. From. And I guess that's to your first point about you know having a strong feedback group that is a little more intimate than just like the whole yeah. server. So yeah, there's definitely a good middle ground somewhere in there. Um, like for instance, in my group, we, I had like obviously people who were like applying that year, but mm -hmm. also like some people who already were in the program. Yeah. So that like definitely helped, especially with critiques, because you could compare the types of critiques you are getting, so yeah. you know like what to improve on, and it's not like like a waterfall of different critiques that are like yeah. contradictory. Mm -hmm. So it sure. like definitely helps. That's great. This is a kind of tricky one, but was there anything in particular you did that gave you a slight edge in your opinion? 
I had a hard time like thinking about this one, but、mm. I think like one thing would would have been because like for me, I definitely like started、um, a little earlier this year, where、mm. because I was actually doing my portfolio at the same time as OCAD illustration, since that's the program I was in like this year. Yeah. And it was a good idea to start early because balancing school and portfolio,、yeah. it, it's like every week was. Finishing homework and literally after homework, I had to do like portfolio. So it、yeah. was back to back of like work of nonstop work. Yeah, yeah. So I'm、um, spreading it out throughout like the entire school year. That was like definitely a very good idea since、yeah. I had that like left me enough time to finish like everything.、Mm-hmm. And also like stress as well. It helped balance that too. That's good. Yeah. So I think. Especially、um, for me,、uh, while I was doing that too, I also started off、um, doing like the harder sections of the portfolio、mm. that well, that I struggled in like last year. Yeah. So that would be like、um, perspective, and also I think personal and storyboard. So、mm. those were like the first couple ones I did, and I kind of like did it backwards all the way down to the easiest. So at the end, when I had time left, I was able to. Like come back and actually like change a few things.、Mm. So,、um, for instance, for my like interior perspective, especially on the roof area, it actually used to be like these beams,、uh, wooden beams that went across like the roof. Okay. But I found that it was like really jarring after I looked at it like a month later. So、yeah. I changed it to like this higher up roof, and that was like、uh, something that was like really beneficial of、mm. like spreading out like my work. So I could、yeah. like come back to it later, and it's amazing because I remember, despite you being in illustration at OCAD, you I don't know if you had to postpone any lessons because you were taking the full version of animation fundamentals, so you could you could do that because it's just one on one. But you might have done that maybe once or twice, but I don't remember you doing a whole lot. Like sometimes what happens,、yeah. is students need to like postpone and postpone and postpone,、um, which is totally fine. That's that's part of what you sign up for. But I don't think you did that many times. You managed to kind of show up every time. I just did it for、um, perspective because that、yeah. was where I struggled in a lot. Yeah. But yeah, I just didn't like the idea of like rushing it all at the end. Yeah. Like I know it's、sure. possible for sure, but it's just I just don't want to do that. So, yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's just not for me. Maybe it's for you. Yeah, understandable. And last question: So, if you were a student applying next year, what would be the first thing that you would do to begin the process? Oh yeah. So this one, I was actually because this is my second time applying. This is definitely something that helped me, and it's to pretty much. Firstly, figure out what you know that you're going to like struggle in when you like read over the portfolio、um, guidelines.、Yeah. So if you know that your animation skills aren't that good, or、mm-hmm. like your perspective skills aren't that good, like re- from there start collecting resources or finding like tutors or people who can、yeah. help you. Like、um, I guess like、uh, strengthen those skills.、Yeah. So. When you are doing the portfolio, you aren't like、um, learning at the same time as doing it. Like obviously,、yeah. that's good. I think I was kind of doing that the first time around when I was、mm-hmm. doing portfolio, where it was more of a learning process where I was learning instead of like actually trying to make my stuff like as good as it could be. Yeah. So if you like had like a really like strong tutor or like good resources. Then it would like really help you like get yourself on track and to know like exactly like you know how to do the portfolio so you won't get like too stuck. Yeah, I, that's that's exactly what we try and do. Really, I mean, part of it is me giving you feedback, but a huge part of it is you just doing it and, and having the accountability of showing up at each week to kind of just move things along because so much of it is you and just like your ability to keep rolling the ball along. And making sure that you're completing the work week by week. That's so much of it, yeah. really. Yeah, consistency. Like no one can force you to be consistent. It's like、yeah. you kind of have to do it yourself, which is like I think one of the hardest parts of the portfolio as well. Trying to、yeah. like stay on track because sometimes, obviously, even for me, I like wanted to just stop everything and just like take a long break. Of, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I bet. Absolutely, like it's funny how that happens. I, I have that with my work too, where it's like the moments that I need to do the most work is the moment that I want to like just relax and read a book or just hang out and <laughs> just just turn off entirely. And I think that kind of speaks that everyone has a point of which if they pass this threshold, they will officially be in like overwork. Category. It's hard to articulate that threshold yourself and where that border is between you being 
okay and kind of moving things along at a good pace and being completely like overworked. You know, you just start to get nervous, but it's really just part of the, it's part of it. I, I don't mind the odd crunch time personally, but it has mm -hmm. to be very isolated and I have to have lots of time to recover from it. Yeah, it's like definitely if you are going to crunch, make sure that afterwards you have time to rest because yeah. it's a bad idea. <laughs> If like after the crunch, you still have like school and you have yes. like 10 projects due, but for like something different. Yeah. So make sure you have like time afterwards to like rest. And if you don't like, if you, if you're like me and you don't want to like crunch everything, still same advice, like make sure you have time to rest afterwards because yeah. um, keeping stuff so consistent, it still is like just as tiring. Yeah, yeah. make sure you rest the longest snap you've ever slept like afterwards <laughs> that's a great way to end actually and, and i think probably what you deserve right about now again uh since you now have done this it's over so now you can have a big rest until next <laughs> next august and let's hope that it's in person too right maybe COVID yeah. will be a wrap by then and it'll be very different for you then than folks that applied two years ago i've had students that have gone in like each year and it feels so bad for you know just doing it online the whole time that's true so, i really hope it's in person yeah. especially for life drawing for life drawing since yeah online life drawing is not it it no. has to be in person <laughs> yeah well thanks so much cynthia for sharing all of your amazing tips with us um this no is problem. definitely going to help future year students so i really appreciate your time and congrats again and <laughs> i cannot wait to hear stories of when you're at sheridan next year <laughs> thank you all right well have a good one see ya, see ya.